going through when, your head? When we, when we had it apart there yesterday, I couldn't see physically any oil on the front of the timing cover. Well, I knew it was coming from the back. And I say, all, all I could locate it to, or the area that I found it to be was somewhere around the injector pump. So Dan, what's your, uh, your diagnosis mate, well, your experience on those, well, well I reckon they're superb looking injectors. <laughs> well like I was just saying, it's, it's really hard to tell how good this injector is without physically setting it up on a machine and watching the spray patterns and yeah. the flow rates and so on and so forth. But physically, physically looking at them, um, they don't look too bad. Okay. Alright, now like I was saying to you earlier, well look, for, for one, if the injector itself was leaking, so say the actual body of the injector was leaking fuel and they sometimes can leak fuel through here, that's bad. Yeah. Right? Um, also as well, if the seat was worn or the or the nozzle washer was worn, what you would actually get is you'd get combustion bypassing this here and then travelling up the actual well or the, the tube where the injector sits inside the head. And basically what it nearly what it does is you get soot and carbon deposits that come up here and it just gets hotter and hotter and bakes inside and then it literally welds this injector into the cylinder head and that can that is a regular occurrence on some diesel engines is that that happens no matter what this these washers fail or the seats are too soft and uh, you get basically we call it black death <laughs> you literally get carbon and, and soot and deposits and it just gets hotter and hotter inside of here and literally bakes these injectors into the head and they are, I tell you what, some of them are so hard to get out, it's it's sleepless nights is what's in the really? of there. Like yep. I say, some of them what I've actually done is I've unscrewed this here and I've got a little adapter that bolts on there and then I've got my engine crane and just put pressure on it, it's coated the well in WD-40 and then you come back in the morning and this injector's popped out the head. Yeah, and you've got to do that for all four of them, so it takes a little while, but this new little tool that I've got, and I don't know where it is, it's packed away somewhere, I haven't even, I haven't even unpacked it yet, but you just screw it onto here, and it's like a little pneumatic um, hammer, and that just keeps jarring this until it eventually pulls the injector out. Um, but the 1KDs, generally speaking, you, as you saw me then, I just twisted them out by hand, that's pretty much how I've done them. Yep. Yeah, mate, what about the seals? They, they're copper, aren't they? These are. These are. Oh, no, they're not. These ones are actually look like they might be alloy ones. Um, the ones that we've got, I think, are steel. Okay. Um, but these look like they may actually be alloy ones. Yes, they are. So what's the go there? What's going on with that? What story can that tell you? Well, they could be. No, it's like copper. They are copper, I think. Have a look at that. Um, yeah, look, they, they're really not overly bad. It, it, it looks like they are a little bit distorted there. I don't know if you can see that. So it's just kind of opened up a little bit there, slightly. But they're sealing up. That's the main thing. Otherwise, we would see all this kind of sooty, ashy stuff going up the up, up here, going up the actual length of the injector. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Now they actually do also have a rubber o-ring here, so you can see this here, this here is a rubber o-ring, right, you can see that? Yep. So that actually stops water and rubbish and that coming down into here and then corroding the injectors into the head, which is really good, there's not, not all injectors actually have this rubber oh, well, o-ring yeah. here. And there's another seal up the top here as well, which seals the top of the, or the head of the injector into the rocket cover itself. Right, but those injectors really don't look that bad. Yeah, another crazy question, just what you're talking about. Mm. Where does the, the tapping or the noise come from when you hear when you inject it? Where is that? That's actually within the combustion chamber. Now, the injectors themselves will make a little bit of a clicking, tapping noise. That's just them opening and closing, right? Yep. Uh, and also, you've got to remember the fuel's going through here at very very high pressure so yeah. it's gonna make a bit of a noise right? um, but yeah when and this is what I was explaining to you last week so this this is very hard to, very very hard to see but 
there's tiny, tiny little holes. See this little bulb here? Let me see if I can get it on the camera. Right. There's tiny, tiny little holes here. I don't know if you can quite see that. But they're there, trust me. Yeah, trust. <laughs> right. right there, that little bulb. You should see some tiny little holes. And I mean really, really tiny. Is that three or four of them? Uh, there might be four of them. I can't be so cool. You see four on the camera there, viewers. Come on, get a focus. Yep, there we go. I can see it from here. You can Just, see them? Yeah, yeah. Little holes? Yep. 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 Now, if an injector was really, really bad, those holes would get bigger okay. because of the wear of the actual fuel pressure and the fuel itself coming through those holes. It would wear them and they would become bigger. Um, and that's usually what happens is those holes become larger and also the injector, the little uh, valve inside of here just for, you know, I'm not going to go into technical with it, but there's a little valve inside of it that basically opens and closes. If that fails as well, they become, they then start to leak, they'll dribble fuel um, off of its combustion cycle. Right? But the actual noise that you're hearing is the fuel not being injected correctly into the cylinder and not being burnt. Gotcha. Yep. Or not being burnt efficiently. Yeah. Right? Now when these get really bad, instead of them atomizing the fuel in a real fine mist and, and spraying it into the combustion chamber, um, they will dribble fuel in. So that's that's not good because it, it won't combust the way it should. And that's when you get that knocking and cracking kind of noise. Okay? I'm sure that there's some good videos on the net describing exactly what happens to an injector when it fails. So you could probably watch something like that and see, but that's just a very brief summary of how an injector fails and, and what, what happens basically. It's the fuel not being injected and atomized correctly. It's dribbling in. And then when it, I say, when you have problems with starting in the morning and you get this big white plume of smoke come out the back, it's because the fuel hasn't atomized enough that it's got that initial burn. So there's, you know, the, Obviously there's got to be a little bit of heat in the cylinder. Compression also as well adds the heat. And um, yeah, you get unburnt fuel or raw fuel sometimes. It, they won't even, it won't even combust. Mm. And then that's starting to get into... Um, that's this, this when it starts to get a bit serious. Yeah. Yeah. You'd never want to drive a vehicle in that condition. No. No. Um, because if it's like that on startup, well, and then you go start driving it, you may think it's going okay, but it's not really, there's excessive heat in the in the combustion chamber. Mm, yeah. Yeah. Well, the, the main Very thing is, experience in this area. the main thing I say to people with any diesel is, diesels make all kinds of funny noises, but you drive that vehicle day in, day out, and you know when something doesn't sound right or doesn't feel right. And if you get to that point that you're, dri you're starting up in the morning and you're driving it, and something you just go to yourself, oh, something doesn't feel right, doesn't sound right, just get it checked. Yeah. Because that could be the make and break of doing a job like this, as opposed to like a product I've got outside that now needs a whole, a brand new engine right, built. Yeah. yeah. And what's happened there? Uh, I believe we've had a failed injector and uh, we've basically lost compression on cylinder three. So there'll be a failed piston. Um, so you've got one of those in your workshop? That's right, it's physically in the car park. Yeah. That's, that's kind of a job that's coming. I've got to build a literally a brand new engine for it. Yeah. Um, yeah. Now that one, I don't know the, I don't know, you know, whether it's making noises or whatever, and it, it does a lot of mileage. Like it is, it is a high mileage engine, so, you know, it, it could just be general wear and tear on it. But uh, yeah, if you if you feel something isn't right, get it checked. Yeah. So just you just uh, one of those washers came off, mate. Is that right? Yes. So we, so saw, it, we it. saw it fall off when we put it. It was on cylinder one. Yep. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in there. And I've got this little tool that I made up. You just drop it down inside of here, and you grab that washer. And there it is. There it is. Beautiful. I was just saying to Mike that I actually had. This is a, a long time ago now. I had a customer that um had just had some work done. That was a, a, a BT50 3 litre turbo diesel. And he's complaining of a drive belt squeak and it actually wasn't a drive belt at all. It was compression leaking past his injector and I actually found two 
washers in there. So someone had dropped a washer in off the old injectors and not checked it, put new washers on the new injectors, put it in, and as you can guess, it hasn't sealed up properly at all, and you get this horrific squeaking noise. It sounds like a belt chirping away, but it's not. So I had to, and he actually did cause quite a bit of damage to the, the seats and so the head, so I got, had to go around and recut all the seats and clean them all up, and it takes hours to do, but anyway. After that, it was great, but um, yeah, it's very important to get these out and clean the seats thoroughly, which I've got a little tool for that. Um, these won't need recutting, they should be in perfect condition. There'll be no burrs or um, carbon deposits or hitting or anything like that, so we'll just clean them up. It's very, very simple how to clean them up, uh, and they'll be nice and dry and clean when we put the new injectors in. So they only given my engine a bit of polish time. I have. I can't find... The problem is there's still too much in boxes here at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I haven't... Have that long I haven't... I, uh, no. I haven't actually unpacked everything yet, so I'm not 100% sure where everything is. But anyway, what we're going to do, we're just going to clean out the actual tube that this injector sits in. Right, so it's a very simple little thing, just a little uh, wire brush. You just feed that down the side, just give it a twist, like this, and that will just clean it all out. And um, then we just get a, a nice clean rag, just feed it down inside, and just make sure that we've got all the every, uh, you know, any little deposits or anything out of there. But these are really, really clean compared to some of so I just showed like the little seat cutter kit that I've got there but we're not going to use that on this it's not needed whatsoever. Okay. No. So I'll just clean this up now and um, that's pretty pretty much it. The injectors are ready to go in. Okay. Um, so I don't need and, uh, I'll just put a bit down each well. This, this is just a little tool that I've made up myself, very, very simple. It's just a literally a little bit of scouring pad that I've cut out into a circular shape. It's stuck it on the end here. And we just feed that down and just twist it, and that just lightly buffs the seat, okay? Um, I've got others over there, I, I, but um, this works really, really well. So that's a tool that I've used for ages, and it's just a nice, light bit of scouring pad on there, and just give it a little twist, rotate like that, and it cleans them up really, really nice. Ridiculously clean. Oh. Oh. Screwdriver like that, and just feed this like that. Just clean out the. I'll just get a smaller screwdriver to go in there. So what you're looking for um, down inside on the seat there is you want a nice, clean, shiny surface. Um, any little black spots that you might see could be pitting. So just make sure that's what you're seeing when I went down with that little scourer. That basically will lift any uh, deposits or anything inside of there. And then you can go through the rag, a little bit of brake clean down there. Just give, them, give it a twist and it will pull everything out. So I'm happy with that there. Super, super clean. So. Um, what we'll do now is we're going to grab the new injectors, we're going to record all of the coding and we'll go more into that uh, later on with how they should be 
coded and how you actually physically go about that. Um, but for the moment we're just going to record the coding down and then we'll mark each injector cylinder 1, 2, 3, 4 and then we'll put them in their corresponding um, cylinders, corresponding um, areas. Okay? So, um, you mentioned yeah. before, yeah. briefly, uh, just in terms of putting the right injector in the right spot. Yeah, so what we'll do is we'll get an injector, we'll record its code, and then we'll put, say for example, cylinder 4, and then that injector that we take out will go straight into cylinder 4. There's no putting injectors in and then writing the codes down. We, before the injector physically goes in, we'll record the code and then put it in and mark it up as cylinder 4. It's very, very easy to misinterpret what's actually recorded on the top of these injectors. So this is your code in here. Okay. And if you can see this series here of numbers and letters, right, that is your code. And it is very, very important you get it critically correct because it, A, it either won't allow you to do anything, it'll just keep saying incorrect, or B, um, if you don't put this code in correctly and it does happen to somehow um, go through, I guess you'd say, uh, and it's, yeah, the injector doesn't operate the way it should, it can cause problems. So we physically write this down and it's really, really easy to misinterpret these. So sometimes the zeros look like Ds and so you, you've got to really study them to have a good look. Luckily when they're new, everything's nice and clear on top. But uh, yeah, we'll, we'll record that, for example, that, um, that code there, mark it as cylinder four, and then put it straight in cylinder four, and then do that for all four injectors. And then we physically get it all written down. When it comes to coding with the scan tool, it's near impossible to make a mistake. Ah, yep. There's many ways you can do this. Uh, there are some uh, nozzle washers that have little legs on them and they actually are an interference fit. They kind of almost press on there and they, they hold themselves on. These don't, they'll fall off. You can put a little dollop of grease on there. Um, I don't like doing that, quite honestly. I like them to be dry. Uh, I have some people doing the grease thing, but this is my way. Take the washer, drop it down the hole. Right, and then what you do is you have a look at it. It may may have gone in perfectly, this one hasn't. You just simply feed something down there, just very, very lightly, tap it, push it into place, and uh, that's it. Simple as that. It's in there, it can't fall out, it can't go anywhere, it can't sit on an angle or sit in there cocked. As soon as you push this injector in, it's gonna go straight through the middle of it and seal up, simple. backwards so we go four three two one so this is going in cylinder three so we just record down these digits here okay so one eight eb and we just record them in blocks of four exactly like it is here hey daniel writing's a bit messy mate it is how are you going to read those numbers? <laughs> it's doctor's writing, I've been told. Oh, well. Drop the injector in. Sit it. Do not, <laughs> not drop it drop in. Drop it in. Don't hit the end. Yeah. Just. It's like gold, mate, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. It's like gold. Give it a bit of a wiggle and it'll, it'll work its way down inside of there. Right. Nothing, awesome, nothing complicated. Very, very simple. You know Words of the mechanic. There. <laughs> I've done a couple of them now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so Danny just gave them a bit of a freshen up. Yep, just gave them a clean up and then we just sit them back in there like that. Okay. Now what we do next is we get the bleed off rail on because we want these to physically sit in the right position. If you bolt them down now, they could be sitting off centre and then you won't be able to get anything on. Mm. Right. So we sit the bolts in there loosely and then we just just to hold them in place so they don't pop up. Yep. And then we can turn them as just we need. Yep. Yep. As you can see here, they, that's a little kit that come with it, but these O-rings and these seats are seat washers. 
sample, they already come with the injector itself. Oh, but this yeah. is just a little kit that they prepare for you. So it's, it, it's all genuine stuff. I can see we've got a genuine rocket cover gasket there. These are the little bleed off rail um, banjo bolt washers. And you can see, genuine, they're all, all, all Toyota. <laughs> All yeah, that folks, they're all genuine. All genuine stuff. No second hand, no reconditioning. No, no cheap stuff. No. Right, so there, we'll just keep these for a rainy day. And you get these as a kit, kit Dan, is that right? Yeah, I, I buy, so I buy all of this from my supplier as a full comprehensive kit. So every, every single thing you need to do this job is in that kit. Um, everything is genuine. Absolutely everything you buy is genuine. Oh, genuine Denso injectors and all of this is genuine Toyota stuff. Um, so Dan will work out, he hasn't worked out the costings yet because um, I've bought a whole lot of other stuff. But, yeah. but what I'll do, Dan, when you've got time is just um, some folks at home are just asking yep. just for the injector kit, what, yeah. it, roughly it, what they're looking at. You remember at. that depending on your year model of vehicle as well, there, there are different types of injectors. The price does change a little bit. Yeah. Um, but also as well, uh, like we've basically gone the whole lot with yours you've got injector lines and everything um, years ago I kind of wasn't really doing any injector lines they were a little bit expensive and kind of we, we, we deemed them to be unnecessary but uh, I just do them as part of it now but they've come down in price a lot um, and most vehicles that we do know anyway are going to be at least 10 years old aren't they with a 1k dealers yeah. let's face it so it's, it's, it, yep. it's good to put a set of injector lines on there for sure yeah well the old saying mate best to be uh, safe than sorry isn't it yeah yeah exactly Right, so there's the new anchor bolts there. Cool, they will right. come new as well. Yep, all brands thank in there. So what we do is, we've got our anchors in, we just put the bolt in. Right, give it a couple of turns to thread it in. And that's all we're doing at the moment. Bolt in, a couple of turns. We just want to hold everything still and in place. It's still loose enough. But to, still loose enough so we can physically turn those injectors. Right? We want to be able to turn these injectors like this to put our bleed off rail on. Once the bleed off rail is on there, we know that those injectors are in the correct position. And that was another real important reason why I said to use the impact gun to take it off. You haven't twisted or manipulated that bleed off rail. Because if you put everything back on and one of these is slightly off and you can't get your injector line on there, well you got to pull it all off and start again. Yeah. Or it could push against the seal and you'd end up with an oil leak. We don't want oil leaks, Dan. <laughs> Half moon's in, eh? Yep. In. We're just going to wipe this off here because we don't actually want any dry sealant up here just yet. We want that to dry in, that's fine, but... Uh, we will put little dollops of sealant here in its right spots in a second, but we've got a couple of other things to do first. Longer one. The longer one goes up the back into the cylinder head, and these four go through into each injector. So it's very, very simple. I've already put the little saddle washers on there. You get this one through ready to go so it doesn't fall off. These won't fall off because they're sitting with the saddle at the top. Feed it around like this. Okay. And you start this, start them all by hand, never tighten them down until you've got them all started well and truly by hand. And then you simply just go along. And as you can see here, we have to move our injector. So we're just going to give it a bit of a twist. And in it goes, just like that. Not just like that. <laughs> <laughs> Feeding them through. Make sure that the actual anchors are position correctly. Tighten these down a bit. Oh sorry I've made a mistake here. <laughs> I've made a mistake. I forgot the washers that are told you that we shouldn't throw away. It's on the old bolts. 
Well, you only had them in there just to hold them in yeah, place. Yeah, just to hold it in place, yep. Right. Edge faces down. That goes in. Loosely bring these down. Okay. As you can see, it pulled the injector down a bit there. Yep. Right. You leave these okay. loose for the moment. Oh, yep. Yeah. Well, folks, I'm probably looking the wrong way into the sun here while Dan's just doing that. Um, I'm going to show, his, show you this gladiator. <laughs> so I'll just turn the camera around and we'll have a look, eh? Check that out. So he's designed all this stuff here. All this stuff. And all the lights. up here a bit we're getting a bit um a bit, messy, a bit congested unfortunately all all the other uh work tables the the mobile ones are all in use so it looks like i'm gonna have to buy some more <laughs> well, what have you got here you got some brand new um injection lines, lines yeah. yes and it's part of the kit like we talked before that's so. part of the kit so this yeah. is the the full comprehensive kit this one so you get like i say everything you remove uh you replace Makes sense. So Dan's just about to put a half moon back in there. He's just cleaning up the old sealant from the rocker cover and uh, he's going to replace the half moon just in here. Can you see that on Just, just in there. Just in there. So I've given the uh, car a wheel rotation. Um, I've just done the four wheels uh, rotating while being able to use uh, Dan's voice. I just did that while he was out, and I managed to change the rear 
killed her, but it's, yeah, it's not a fun job. Those clips are a little bit uh, technical to get off. But anyway, I've done it, and uh, as I said, Dan's just here to do a bit of finishing off there with the injectors. Is that right, mate? Yeah, so we're just going to... Giving the half moon a clean up. Giving this a clean up, getting all the old silicon off of it. Um, I always, even if they're not leaking, I always um, clean these up and reseal them anyway because at some point it is going to leak. Yeah. Oops. So we're just giving a bit of a clean up. It's my razor blade now, here it is. So mate, we're talking about oil leaks, so you have bought some seals for two items. I have. I've got the seals that I think have a problem. I've got two new ones. So I'll um I'll fit those and clean up the injector pump and the power steel pump and fingers crossed that's the that's where it is. I'm I'm almost certain that's where it's coming from. Yeah. I can't see anything else in there where it would be coming from, not to the extent of the leak that it is, like it's a fairly decent leak. So we'll get those new seals in there and that should solve the problem. So Dan, the cam cut, cam? <laughs> cam sharp. Cam sharp, yeah. It's getting late in the day, mate. Mm. Is in. Yep, I'll we'll put the cam sharp seal, seal in. So you got a new seal there. Yep. Not right. awesome. And that's pretty much the last of everything up the top here. We can prep it to put the rocker cover in now. Yep. Um. So Dan, you're nearly finished for the day. You're going to yeah. call it shortly. What's yeah. um, what's left to do, mate? Well, we've got to reseal that injector pump. Yep. Um, once we've done that, it's pretty much the reverse of what we've already done, really. Yeah. Okay. Um, once the injector pump's sealed up, we can uh, get the timing gear and everything on. You're also going to look at the power steering, aren't you, as well, when you're doing it? I'm going to pull the power steering pump off and do it anyway. Yeah. Res reseal that because um, it's too hard to tell which one it's coming from. It, I, I'm almost certain it is the injector pump, but one's above the other, so we're just going to do it anyway. Yep. While we're in there, we'll do it. Um, excuse my ignorance, but how big's the job for the uh, injector pump? Um, excuse my ignorance, but how big's the job for the uh, injector pump? Um, excuse my ignorance, but how big's the job for the uh, injector pump? Getting that off. Mm, not massive, considering we've already got a lot of the stuff off. Yep. It's not a huge job. So 
So the job's getting done, we just pretty much started. We've got the bonnet off and uh, Dan's just letting me know what things get pulled off the engine and what stays. Well mate, this is day one. Day one. <laughs> what a day. You look a bit uh, worn out mate. I've been, as you say, to run around all over the place and yeah. sort of bits and pieces for other cars as well while we're trying to do this. Yeah. I can't wait to get a couple more people in <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Uh, but anyway, we, it's alright. Your yeah, shop's looking good mate, your shop's looking really good. Yeah. Well, yeah. I want to say thanks. Thank That's you. Right. No worries. And um, what we're back back again tomorrow with mm. the rest of this room or finish off. So. Yeah. 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 So tomorrow, um, hopefully by about, I want to say probably about 2 o'clock, we'll actually have it ready to code up and run. Um, and then we'll go on a Tesla, make sure yeah. we're happy with it. Yep. Check the leaks. Yep. Clean up the film system, stuff like that. Yep. Um, and then we're good to go. Sounds good. And one little job we're going to do with the light bar? Oh, the new light bar, yeah. Is that a big job for you? No, uh, <laughs> what we're going to do is extend some wiring and fold it right. up onto the roof basket there. Yeah, that's, yeah. So, so that's it. All right. No worries, mate. Well, I'll see you in the morning. <laughs> well, good. Sweet. See ya. Well folks, this is day two and it's not the day that um, that I wanted actually, in fact, <laughs> I'm smiling but I'm not really smiling. So I've come in to see Dan, uh, pretending that I was here for work experience, <laughs> but he, uh, he's got some pretty uh, devastating news I suppose about the Prado and uh, I'm going to bring him in, he's going to explain what he's um, found on the Prado but before he does though he's just mentioned to me that well his own time or certainly not in his normal hours of working he's been here worrying about uh, this particular problem that we've got or come across on the Prado so before he comes in and explains I want to say uh, which I will say to Dan thank you um, it's just not the normal run of your mill mechanic. Uh, so from that side of it, um, he's a good bloke and appreciate uh, the human side that he's got uh, in that respect. But um, anyway, nothing I suppose could have prepared me for what he's about to tell you. So um, Dan's just over here, so mate, you're probably better off explaining than me. Mm. Uh, a bit of a sad moment, really. Um, I, <laughs> you got to come yeah. in a bit, mate. You, you got to be on the camera. So, curiosity got the better of me. And, uh, about nine o'clock, I come back last night, and I just had to know where this oil leak was originating from. Like, I've worked on a lot of these engines, and they don't just leak from the injector pump area. Like that was quite a significant leak that you had. So. Anyway, I come in and I pulled the power steer pump off, went to pull the injector pump off and realised that uh, there was physically nothing holding the injector pump in other than the actual timing sprocket. Um, and then all of a sudden my heart sank and my worst fears become very apparent that the bolts or the studs had snapped off clean inside the gear case. Um, and uh, basically game over. <laughs> <laughs> game over really uh, for getting anything finished off today um, so Dan um, just mm. to run it through mm. so we we had a significant oil leak and you'd seen that oil leak before had the, you? I, I will admit the oil leak is what worried me more than anything else because it so was it was fairly significant bring you going through when, your head. when we when we had it apart there yesterday I couldn't see physically any oil on the front of the timing cover well I knew it was coming from the back I say all, all I could locate it to, or the area that I found it to be was somewhere around the injector pump um, or the top of the power steer pump. Now I have, se have seen the power steer pumps leak before, but uh, or weep from that where it goes into the back of the timing case. Uh, but it's been quite a gentle leak. This was significant. You start the vehicle and it literally Pour streams out. out. 
So anyway, about quarter past nine, I'm sitting there at home, and I thought, no, I, I can't, I can't leave this. I've got to go. So I came in. Wow. I came in. I stayed out about about half past eleven, and I anyway, I, I pulled the pump off, or I pulled the power steer pump off. Went to pull the injector pump off, and um, there was nothing holding it in. Literally, the only thing that was holding it in was the nut on the actual shaft on the on the um, timing sprocket. So the studs have snapped off in the gear case. Um, or the, the timing gear case. Um, uh, it looks like it's been like that for quite a while. The pump's just been floating there in the breeze uh, and it's actually worn not only the le legs on one of the mounting legs on the, on the pump but it's actually worn the back of the gear case too hence why all of a sudden it's just started leaking like there's no tomorrow. Um, I had a go at trying to drill those studs out. They've snapped off very irregularly. They've snapped off at an angle. The, the spot that you physically got to get a drill into to drill these out is really, really tight. Um, but just with the damage to the back of that gear case, I'm not confident that even if I drilled those out and mounted that pump up, that you wouldn't have potential issues in the future. Now, you were so lucky that that didn't twist and lock the gears and basically destroy your whole engine mm, mm. really mm, it could, could happen it, anyway. it, it, it could have and i'm going to say that if it wasn't to happen it would have been on your trip no two ways about it it was it was it was going to happen the only thing that was stopping that pump from physically turning was the little pipe that feeds the fuel rail that was it that was the only thing that was stopping it from moving so the you mentioned to me before, so the, I was worried about a, probably more of a bottom end noise. Mm. And it was no, the no, no, but that was yeah, that noise that yeah. when you took off that. Yeah, see, that noise that you showed me a few weeks back um, was irregular to me. Like I could hear it, and especially when I started it up of the morning and initially moved it into here, I could hear a rattling noise, and I, it, it wasn't it wasn't an injector noise. No. Uh, what it actually was was that pump slopping around at the back of the case. So, really, really bad news. Um, devastating news, to be honest. I, I don't really have any words. Uh, it, it looks like someone has been in there before. Why? I, I don't know why. Um, yeah, I, I, I have no words. I really don't. Um, so this this now adds to about the fifth vehicle that I've got to pull an engine out now at this new workshop. And Say that, um, yeah, I'm, I'm feeling pretty gutted, mm. but I've got, still got to look at it that it's it's sitting in a workshop yeah. and we've come across the problem. So yeah. it's not like I'm across the Nullarbor no. or I'm driving home and, no. and it happens. So, mm. I mean, as bad as it is, I'm, I'm thankful and grateful for that part yeah, of it the, and and the the silver lining is that you've still got an engine that will run yes had i say had that physically spun or even cocked that gear slightly it was going to be catastrophic yeah um yeah so uh, the, the only thing i can suggest is that we get the engine out today yep the physical repair that needs to be done on the engine will us ass will assess the condition of it I think the best option possibly is to send it to my engine builder, get him to do the repairs so that, like, it, this is going to take hours of my time to do it, get him to do the repairs. He's got all the tooling there to pull the, the, pull the gears and everything off. He'll probably, he may even have um, those rear covers with an, with an oil pump in stock, possibly. He'll, he'll get it all together much quicker than I will. Not that I haven't done them before, but I just know that they take a lot of time and, it, and unfortunately it's time that I really don't have. We get the engine out, drop it down to him, he can do the repair, we get it back, I put it back in, reassemble it. Maybe, by pure miracle, I might have this done before you go. I was going to say that there's a big elephant in the room here at the moment. By pure miracle, but un unfortunately I've got a... <sighs> Work doesn't stop for me. <laughs> I was like, I, I, don't, I, yeah, I don't know what to say. And I was convinced, what that, is, I was nice convinced this. that by... By lunchtime, we were going to have this running. You, did. you and said by two o'clock you want yeah, this out the door. It'd be out the door. But and as I soon got as up I seen really that, excited. Yeah. As soon as I seen that, I was like, yeah. well, 
have to go home now. <laughs> I've got nothing left. I, I had a feeling that there was going to be something that was going to catch oh, me out no. with yeah. this oil leak. Because yeah. oil, nothing else concerned me other than this oil leak. Because when I, when I see a leak like that, that is quite pronounced when the vehicle is running, that rings alarm bells to me. I get my attitude, it yeah. is what it is. No, like, this. I, I'm not going to say that I haven't seen this before, because I have seen this exact problem before where studs have snapped off and the injector pump's just floating around. Um, I can't tell you why it happened, but I have a feeling that that pump has been pulled off before. Someone has over torqued those studs and they have eventually sheared off. Now, remember yesterday when I told you that it looked like someone had removed those injector lines? Yes. I'm convinced that someone has, and that, has, that pump has been off before. Because on the actual <coughs> the nut that pulls the, uh, pulls the shaft or, um, and the keyway into that uh, timing gear, um, someone's given that a good whack on the end. So I know the pump's been out before. Uh, I, why, I, I don't know. Um, they don't like running on a leaded, believe no. it or not. No. That's possibly what's happened. I uh, just, for you guys, I, I bought the car at 110, 110 so yeah. not even probably running really. Uh, so who, who knows? Honestly, that's, that, that was so lucky that <laughs> I found it now. Yes. Oh, you you yeah. could have got two kilometers up the road and it just all, yeah, go. And look, to be honest, Dan, a bit, once I started hearing that other noise, I knew there was mm. a different noise Yeah. other than the yeah. Injector noise. I'll well, let, I'm not driving it. And it's well, been sitting at home for seven weeks. Yeah, w one of the bolts that. Um, You're well, getting away on Sorry, w w one, oh, one on. of the studs that was in the back there looks like it's been gone for quite a while because the actual um, the hole on the thread was full of oil residue and sediment. So it looks like it's been gone for a fair while. The other one, I'd say, pretty much freshly snapped when you started noticing that oil leak. I don't know how close I've got to get. Everyone to see, but yeah, no, you're doing um, right. You're doing fine, then. You right? see that this thread here is heavily worn. It's all worn down. Looks like it's been stretched. So literally, all I've found. See, there's the snapped. That's where it's snapped off in in the actual um, gear case. So all, literally, all I found is that this was hanging in the pump like that, and uh, not attached to anything. No, no nut on the back nothing it was just sitting there like that and this I think was the only thing that was stopping the pump from spinning was this kind of sitting in there and it was holding up against the gear case <laughs> just a yeah absolute joke really do, do you want to show the folks the actual pump I'll show them the out? pump yeah. here um, and this is the this is the area of where it was leaking is here and I don't know if you can see it looks darker here than it does over here that's because this has actually been rubbing away at the back of the gear case because it's been sitting in there and just wiggling like this or you know kind of a bit of an orbital movement and here as well you can see it's physically ovaled out this mounting hole in the in the leg of the pump where it's been moving around it's damaged that um, but yeah there's there's a lot of very fine metal shavings in the back of the um, the gear case there and uh, yeah, someone's, the nut that goes on the end of here, someone's given that a good whack with a hammer to, to obviously remove it in the past. But this is the O-ring that we got yesterday that we were going to replace. Mm. Um, mm. And these don't just fail. Mm. You know, they're, they're, they're a silica-based um, or silicon-based O-ring. They don't just perish and fail. Like they're, they're pretty good, but... Well, then the oil's yeah. got to get out. The yeah. oil's got to get out, out past anyway. here. So it was literally tracking past here and running down at a pretty decent rate. So, yeah, pretty devastating news, to be honest. Um, I <laughs> I didn't want to see this. Let me put it that way. I didn't want to me see either. this. <laughs> no. So, um, yeah. Engine's got to come out and we've got to do it properly because otherwise you just end up with something like this no, again. No, 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 yeah. Yeah. So if we can't torque those studs down or torque those nuts down on these studs properly to the correct torque spec and get this pump seated in there, uh, it's going to move again. And I'm not confident that, that, that the structural integrity of that gear case and the threads themselves, even if I tried to repair it or could repair it, 
that we're not going to have issues there in the in the future and I, like hell I want to do this again for you <laughs> no, <laughs> or, or, or end up with you go oh Dan uh, engine just stopped on me we don't have much luck so, at the moment are we the, no, Jeep, the Jeep's no had, one, a, had a no one is having it's not just you I, I'm going to tell you now like I say I haven't even officially opened this, this workshop yet and um, I have <laughs> I have now two Prados with engine damage I have three Jeeps sitting here, or three Jeeps off the road with electrical faults. Watching and this channel? At least one person who, who is qualified who is qualified and really good with um, this kind of stuff. Four wheel drive engine work. Keen? Um, enthusiastic? Oh, it, you got to be. Yeah. I, I wouldn't be here if I wasn't enthusiastic. No, about no, it. no, but another worker. Yeah, another work, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, you, you've got to be somewhat enthusiastic. Um, so after they, is there any, excuse my, um, no idea, mm. but are you looking for someone that's out of their apprenticeship time or maybe no. they got the last one to go? Oh, or yeah. what, what, um, come so, on, so, so you advertise someone. for someone? Well, look, we, we, we've, we, my wife and I have written up an ad to employ the correct person that, or to, to seek out the correct person that we're, we're trying to, you know, looking to employ. But yeah, I'm after someone who is either in the very late stages of their apprenticeship you know someone ideally third year on if you know they're looking for a move out of a dealership whatever the case may be um, or someone who's fully qualified who's got really good knowledge with four wheel drives like um, servicing general repairs and the big bonus for me would be someone who's got you know a good head for major engine repairs as far as the engine conversion stuff goes that's kind of my area that I want to tackle. I don't expect someone to come in and just go, hey, here's a 120 hour job doing an engine conversion, off you go. I don't expect that. That's something I could train someone up on. But um, as far as these big repair jobs go, yeah. For me, um, well, tell me yeah. what mechanic yeah. comes in after mm. hours because he's got to thinking about something and has to come in and check something on, the, on their vehicle. I mean, mm. that's. I. Thank you. you you're not the only one. I've, I've done it. I've done it a lot before. I, I can't. I can't sit there and not know the answer to a question. Yeah. Why there was an oil leak of that magnitude when everything appeared to be perfectly Normal. okay? Yeah. I wasn't, oh, wasn't no. going to beat around the bush. No. I was just going to say, right, okay, you need to sit no. down and have, listen to what I've got to say. Um, Maybe I need a more yeah. than a cup of coffee to start yeah. this day, mate. Oh, I, I was going to come in and have a beer straight away. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> this isn't my first rodeo. I've done this many, many, many times before. I'm the ma master of pulling engines out, putting them back and repairing and putting them back in. I just thought oh, I would be, uh, what's the word, pretty real about it, so uh, very, yeah, very, very disappointing. It does go to show that when you just have a feeling something's not right, you need to act on it. Realistically is that given what he's found, you would not want that to happen say uh, crossing the Nullarbor, pulling that van, doing 100 k's an hour and that gave way, I mean I would be in a world of trouble. <laughs> um, I've got a trip uh, plan leaving uh, in less than four weeks from from today. Okay so uh, we've 50 to 60 percent of it has been flights booked, um, combination booked, paid for, and obviously there was a bit of a budget for the maintenance part of this car, which was the injectors. So um, I think that's probably doubled. <laughs> so, um, so look. Um, yeah, don't have. I don't have the funds to be quite honest. I don't. Um, uh, we will be drawing on funds <laughs> from somewhere, but still maintain the idea that this is the time that I want to do things while Shelley is able to. I just had some news. I don't know them, but it was uh, someone I follow on Facebook, travelling around Australia. Oh, 
travelling around Australia, they probably been doing it for less or for 12 months, I think it was. Cruising along, having fun. I saw pictures of their different uh, places that they've been, and uh, all of a sudden, um, this happened at January this year. Got di diagnosed with cancer, and within three weeks, he's no longer same age as me. So, um, yeah. Uh, so, my motto is Prado 150 out of here while I can. I'm going to do it. We're going to do it. And while Shelley's in a position to do it, we are just going to do it. So I know that we can manage it. So we're stretching, stretching it a little bit, but we're going to manage it. This is just throwing me completely out of the water. What do you, I mean, what do you do? <laughs> what do you do? I mean, this is, yeah, I, I just don't have any words. What, what, what's, what's the answer? What do you do? Anyway, uh, it's really good that Dan's able to try and do his best to work in with everything that he's doing at the moment and try and get this done. So um, if this video goes out before I get the car back, <laughs> um, hopefully uh, it all works out and we get on the road at the right time, even if I have to leave, I suppose, a couple of days later, maybe. but. Anyway, uh, I'll keep you posted.